here we are everyone. <clears throat> Hopefully you've made it through all of my other videos and all the other mindless rambling and probably in the, in the actual mashing bit of the video what was probably a bit of a dirty hangover if I'm honest. Um, comes to us all when they start to get a little bit heavier as, uh, as you get older. Um, but uh, Friday Night Drinks Club uh, yeah, and a few beers while uh, uh, making the starter kind of uh, definitely slowed the process down uh, on brew day. But so here we are, and here it is bottled, conditioned, carbonated, the uh, West Coast Imperial Porter. So I thought would be a, a really good way to uh, round it all off would be to uh, open up one of these bad boys um, and uh, pour it out and give it a bit of a taste. So um, here we go. So uh, carbonation, pretty good. Um, this has had, I'm just trying to think, it's had three weeks in the bottle. So it should have carved up quite nicely, should have conditioned quite nicely. Um, here we go, here's the pour. So yeah, looking good, looking good. So uh, there she is, really nice and dark, good kind of brown, creamy head. Now this is the uh, the real key thing that I was aiming for with this, as well as being an imperial porter, so it's like six and a half percent, so quite strong. And I would imagine a couple of these you'd know about it, but uh, it was to try and get a really kind of uh, roasty taste but with uh, that kind of west coast hop kind of nose which is it's just about got it's maybe not as much absolutely as I was hoping for um, maybe I could uh, maybe dry hop it a little bit more but it's definitely got it there it doesn't have that kind of uh, that usual kind of EKG these Ken Golding's kind of nose to it that a normal porter, or at least the, the smoke porter that I make has. Although this has got a little bit of Rausch Mel on it, but not much. All but that smooth. And it does have it's that little kind of porter bitterness to it, but uh, Kind of lifted by that um, sort of American hop. Mm. The other thing I can really tell with this was I actually used um, oats, so rolled oats in this, rather than flaked wheat or anything like that, because I wanted to use the oats to give it that really kind of smooth, oily, um, uh, sort of really, li not licorice but <clears throat> kind of, yeah, really kind of oil the, um, the, the beer, which is, it's done in the mouth, it's really smooth, I mean, that was kind of the idea with it being that higher ABV that you'd need to kind of smooth it out a bit, otherwise it, could kind of be a bit harsh. But it's definitely got that higher ABV, kind of that imperial um, kick to it. You can you can tell it's a higher ABV. It's I wouldn't say it was warming, not like having a spirit or anything, but it's definitely got that bit to it. It's not holding its head as much as I'd like, but I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's, um, it's, you know, it's still got it all there. Um, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's definitely not shy, that's for sure. Mmm, but it's good. I use that via American hops, the, the, the Simcoe and Chinook. The mosaic that I all used for this are all that kind of American West Coasty hops, but they've got uh, they've all kind of got like a slightly piney 
back to them. So I thought you wouldn't want anything too kind of um, grapefruit because kind of grapefruit and kind of roasty chocolatiness would be a bit weird. Um, which seems to have worked quite well. I think where I used uh, the black malt and the chocolate malt in this, which is obviously fairly standard for making a porter. I think I think I would probably back off the chocolate malt a little bit, I think next time. I think it's um or well, maybe the maybe the black malt, I need to check. It, it's got that roastiness to it, but I think uh, one of the two is overriding the other a little bit and I think um Yeah, just to bring that back a little bit more and kind of bring the roastiness out a little bit more. I read somewhere that either of those two hops, uh, those two um, malts, I can't really remember, one has that more roastiness to it than the other one. I've got a funny feeling it's the, um, it's, the, it's the chocolate malt that has that more of that roastiness to it. So yeah, I'd, I'd be tempted to maybe back that off a little bit, um, which might let the that might let the hops sing a little bit, but generally as it goes as an imperial porter, that's pretty darn good actually, if I may say so myself. I think adding the, um, the, the rolled oats is definitely a bit of a revelation actually, um, so I'm gonna have to, I might have to think about that a little bit more, but I think this would be a really nice beer to uh, finish off the evening, probably finish you off as well, but yeah, finish off the evening, maybe if you had a couple of sort of pails and a couple of IPAs or something, a, a glass or two of this to kind of finish the evening off would be quite nice. So yeah, really good. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed the videos. Hopefully um, you've seen all the various bits and pieces and we've taken it right from start, you know, right from start right the way to the end. So hopefully that's been really useful to everyone. Um, I've kind of touched on lots of little bits along the way. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, um, and if you've got any questions about any of the bits and pieces you've seen in any of the videos or uh, any of the comments or feedback, then you know by means post them down below either on this video or any of the others. Uh, it'd be really good to hear from you. Um, and yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun. Um, I do apologise. It's been a bit of a while in between the videos, but uh, hopefully we'll get a few more going uh, in the not too distant future. And um, yeah, we'll we'll uh, get another brew day going. So. And yeah, let me know about your uh, Imperial Porter uh, attempt for your home brews. Um, so yes, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, and I'll hopefully uh, homebrew with you again soon. Cheers. Mm. I like that.